Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, for the content this morning on this episode of Bullet Points, we are going to dive into an opinion piece from Ohio. Now, the source is really important because Ohio is about to become a constitutional carry state. God willing, and DeWine signs his pretty little signature on that piece of paper. It will become law. Done deal. Case closed. Ohio will be counted amongst the constitutional carry states. But this is prompting the leftist gun controllers to come out and write all their opinion pieces, pull their hair out, bounce off the walls because they've got to figure out why they're losing. But the reasons that they're putting forward make zero sense. In fact, within this very article, we're recycling old arguments of which they have previously told we are insane for even bringing up and making the comparison. Everything's going to be linked in the description box below. I want to hear from you guys on this one because this, this is interesting to see how they shift. I'm going to do a quick read and then we're going to dive right into that on the other side. Now, our sponsor for this week's videos is Wooks, W-O-O-X. They are a new outdoor brand based in Hickory, North Carolina, and their mission is to create high-end products for outdoor enthusiasts. The company is the wild child of Manelli Group, an Italian company started in 1937 by Francesco Manelli and his three sons in northern Italy. By making gear in-house, we're able to provide higher quality, better-looking high-end products at a fraction of the going craftsmanship price. If you're into the outdoors, do it beautifully by clicking the link in the description and checking out Wooks today. And thank you to Wooks for making these videos possible for this week. All right, so let's dive into this opinion piece. Now, of course, it's around constitutional carry, right? Opinion. SB 215 and other bills loosening Ohio gun laws have us whistling past the funerals by David Eggert. Okay, that might be a bit extreme whistling past funerals, but let's keep going because you, you can already see where this is going, right? All right, so here's the setup. Cleveland. For years, Ohioans have been assured that allowing responsible gun owners to hide their guns and carry them everywhere will make us freer and safer. Gun right advocates insist that gun regulation is a slippery slope that leads to gun confiscation, which it is. Even as, same, as the same advocates march us down the real slippery slope toward no gun regulation at all. Okay, so you're talking about a very high level of, of uh, comparison here. We're going from being able to endorse our rights that are written in the Second Amendment, this is part of our culture, part of our government, part of our founding documents, versus you want no gun regulation at all. Well, no, we never said that. Well, all we're asking you to do is bear the arms that we can keep per the Second Amendment. But it keeps going. Check this out. This is the part where you have to do one of these in these opinion pieces. You have to do a comparison to where they make a common sense argument and you're just a dolt. All right, check this out. These are alarming numbers, but who is alarmed? Certainly not the Ohio legislature. They continue to pass bills that expand gun rights. Blessing. Stand your ground. That's popping up a lot, isn't it? And concealed carry. While refusing to pass universal background checks, child access prevention laws, or extreme risk protection laws, among other reasonable proposals. You see that? Expanding gun rights in the face of common sense gun reform. Not to mention... The fact that the gun, common sense gun reform that they're going for here, expanding universal background checks, okay? Is that common sense? No, there's already background checks across the whole system. That's a misnomer. Child access prevention laws. So the government can tell you how to store your gun, can tell you where you store your gun, tell you what kind of gun you can have, how you have to do it, and then you can get sued just like in the bill in uh, Nevada? Or no, no, not Nevada. New Mexico? It's not looking great, right? Um, and then the other one, extreme risk protection laws, where the government can deem you can't have the firearm based on whatever you want. Not to mention that definition of extreme flag laws continues to change, as you're seeing right now with bills that are in the legislature in Washington. It starts, you want to talk about a slippery slope. You start right here at, it just makes common sense. And that, well, now you got to worry about co, um, coerc coercive uh, control. Well, now you got to worry about this, that, and the other. If you drive recklessly, you have to take your guns away. That's actually in the bill in Washington. Talk about a slippery slope. Just saying. All right, and this next part I really want to focus on because there's two, it's a two-parter. Check this first part out. Gun advocates tell us that gun regulation is unfair to law-abiding gun owners and that laws should focus on criminals only. This is a catchy argument. That's because it makes sense. Until you think about it. That same logic could be applied to any law that protects public safety by requiring all of us to abide by reasonable standards like requiring a driver's license. Cars are dangerous though not designed to kill. Do you guys remember any time that you make any kind of comparison to a car, then it's, you're crazy. Guns are meant to kill people. Cars are like useful implements. Anything, anybody? 
So now, because they've lost the argument and the bills are about to become law, now it's okay to compare guns to cars. Disingenuous, not nice. Not to mention the fact that it's not about safety, this is about rights. They're conflating the two. But I'm going to go to the next one where it really goes into the meat here. There is no God-given right or constitutional right to drive a car without a license. There's no constitutional God-given right to drive a car. That's the big point they're missing here. And despite gun lobbyists' claims to the contrary, there is no God-given or constitutional right to carry a concealed gun in public without a permit or training. Now, that concealed piece is important. That's why they keep hitting concealed, hide a gun. Because they know they can. how you can keep a gun per the Heller decision. And by the way, the Bruin decision coming down in about three months, it's going to be legal and standard doctrine to uh, carry a concealed gun. Well, excuse me. It's always been legal, but I mean it's standard doctrine. It will be a right because it is a right. The left does this thing where they say, well, the government doesn't, so the Constitution doesn't say you can hide the gun. It just says you can keep the gun. Okay. Well, that was a nice little mix up. Why don't we get that cleared up by the Supreme Court? The Supreme Court makes a ruling and now they can't have this argument. This is why they are shifting and freaking out so hard. They don't know what to do and they're grasping at straws. But the big thing and the reason I wanted to bring this to you was there was literally arguments where it said, you can't compare a gun to a car. A car is a tool that everyone has. A gun is cement to kill people. Tell me if you remember that. Down in the comments field, let me know what you guys think, and I will see you tonight at the 9 p.m. segment. I'm Braden. See you later.